Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today I would like to talk about why I really left the Canal lifestyle. So I've recently just published my final book about my life on board Narrowboat Tilly called So That Was Boat Life and it looks at the last few months I spent on board Narrowboat Tilly and also in depth at the reasons that I decided to give up boat life after spending four beautiful years living out on the canals doing stuff like this basically and I did a video on this topic about why I gave up boat life not long after I'd left the canals and unfortunately that turned into a near 20 minute long rambling video where a lot of the points I wanted to make really sort of got totally lost in just me waffling on and on and on. So I wanted to respond to the huge amount of questions I've had in recent months in response to that video and some of the accusations I've had and again I suppose we'll dive straight in. So firstly I've got to say and we've got to set this out right now as the beginning point. I absolutely loved boat life. I can't explain to you how fantastic I thought waking up in the morning, getting dressed and then doing this was. And the real thing that you've got to understand about why I gave up boat life is that, or at least why I gave up boat life so soon after four years, was because my hand was forced in many ways. In terms of the boat that I was living on, Narrowboat Tilly was only a very small 30 foot long boat. She was 30 years old as well. So she was a very small, very, very basic boat with nothing that you would call remotely a luxury on board. So as I was living on board and the whole basis of my life was getting out into the great outdoors, biking, Boot, uh, booting, biking, walking and just being outdoors, getting in the kayak, active life, that's what it was all about, building this active life, moving around on the canals and setting out for different little adventures from different locations throughout the year and that's why I loved it so much because it was perfect for that but as I was looking around and thinking hmm Narrowboat Tilly. I wonder if I could be living a slightly more comfortable life than sleeping on a sofa bed every night and all that sort of stuff. And I've started to realise that if I wanted to stay on the canals for the long term, I was going to have to either do Narrowboat Tilly up from scratch, from the outside in, from the inside out, or look at buying a new boat and spending the money on a new boat. So originally I thought I'll do up Narrowboat Tilly, and then realised as I was looking at that that I'd be spending a huge amount of money, a huge amount of effort and a huge amount of time to still end up, even if I made the most modern, beautiful, luxurious boat ever, still only having a 30 foot long boat. Then that pushed me towards looking at getting a new boat. And as I was looking at getting a new boat and thinking, hmm, I'm going to be spending 25 to 35,000 pound a year. Am I committed enough to the canal lifestyle that I want to make that sort of financial commitment now and be 100% certain right now that I'm going to want to be living on a boat long enough to make that sort of time, effort and money investment worth my while? And basically, there are a few niggles and a few things that led me to think, hmm, hang on, perhaps I'm not. Before I even thought about making the decision on ending my boat life, over the last year on board Narrowboat Tilly, there were a few different things that really made me realise just how much of boat life was out of my control in terms of the rules that you have to follow and that sort of element to boating. And there's other things that happened, like there was a boat going around with various things were going missing from other boats as it was travelling about, for example. And so there's all those sorts of things that make you like take stock and realise and look at your life and think, oh, how lucky have I been and all that. But one of the things that really illustrated how little control that I had over my own life, really, was when the winter mooring rules changed. And basically, if you don't have a marina mooring or a home mooring for your boat, you have to move every 14 days to a new area. So I travel around and do that over the summer months. And then during the winter, there's a winter mooring scheme where you can pay a fee and stop in a certain area for up to five months. So that's what I'd done for the previous winters afloat. But then in the middle of 2015, I basically had 
the the sort of surprise of oh where I used to moor up and where I'd moored up for the previous winters suddenly I couldn't moor up there so previously I'd moor up at a place that was only about five miles to bike to work and to get to my friends and family and the canal and river trust in exchange would get some money off me so it was win-win I thought but the rules changed and suddenly the two closest places that I could moor my boat for the winter months were way too far out of the way to be travelling to and from for months on end, particularly over the winter months with the bad weather. So that basically sort of totally changed and shifted the way that I thought about where I travelled and when I travelled and basically even if I could have moored up and made it work from these other two nearest winter mooring locations, the cost would have been dramatically increased over what I'd paid for winter mooring previously. So that itself wasn't a boat life ending decision and it wasn't the sort of thing that made me go, right, that's it, I'm out right now. Instead, it was more of that illustration and going, well, if this is how much the rules can change and what an impact it can have on my life from one winter to the next with just one decision for one particular area and sort of aspect of boat life, then again, if I'd... But say even at the start of that year, if I'd have bought a boat for 25 grand, 30 grand or whatever, and then suddenly found that my life was incredibly difficult compared to previous years, I'd be feeling pretty rotten about that purchase, I would say. And this is where people might start going, well, you could just move into a marina, surely, problem solved. And that is very true. And for a lot of people, that's a perfect solution. But myself, like many other people, don't not I haven't got anything against marinas at all. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but for me personally, it goes so against the whole basis of boat life being this active outdoors lifestyle where you're out in the middle of nowhere, just enjoying the countryside, and like I say, waking up in the morning, going travelling on a boat, all of that stuff. That's what it was about to me. So the idea of going and living in a marina where you've got a boat this side of you a couple of feet away and a boat this side of you a couple of feet away at most, you know, depending on how busy the marina is, I suppose. But being in that fixed spot with nothing but metal and other people's windows to look out of your own windows to is definitely the opposite, I would say, of what I wanted a boat for. So there's a lot of things like that where difficulties and all the rest of it could be solved by going into a marina, but then you sort of lose the fundamental reason of why I wanted to live on a boat in the first place, to be travelling out around these beautiful locations and disappearing into the countryside on the canals. So there's, like I say, lots of people who are very happy living in marinas, and that's great. Now, equally... One of the things I said in my previous video, which I think I didn't make uh, clear enough exactly what I meant, and I've got a lot of grief for it, is that I talked about getting older, and I'm a couple of months away from my 30th birthday now, and what I tried to, what I really wanted to say was that I can look back now at my old diaries from a decade or so ago, and see how long it took me to walk or to bike different routes and stuff like that, and I can do those same routes now and see actively and measurably how much slower or how much harder I find those routes than when I was in my real prime of my youth in my early 20s. But I'm not saying suddenly I'm not fit enough to be doing all of the thousands of miles of biking and walking to and from work and out and about to get supplies and all that sort of stuff that I did previously over the years on board Narrowboat Tilly. Instead, I'm looking at my age and thinking I'm getting to a point in my life where I know in the future I'm not going to want to be travelling these huge distances on my bike to get to work or from work. And there were people who said, well, I'm 48 and I just rode a 35 mile bike ride route and all this stuff. And that's great if you're doing it for fun. And if you're going off walking up into the hills or what have you, as I've done so many times in my life, as a fun activity to do on your time off work, then that's that's brilliant. But to make it a part of your life like it had, I mean, there's times in the past where I'd be biking, like flipping over a working weekend, 
because I'd have the boat so far away, I'd have to bike 25 miles from where the boat was to get to my friend's house to sleep at their house while I needed to go to work, so that then, to get into work in the morning, it was only another five miles to cycle in from that point. So, again, it's all great fun, and I do ridiculous walks of, like, 26 miles, 25 miles, and that sort of stuff for fun, but if you're talking about actually basing your working life around traveling maybe up to 20 miles on a round trip to get in and out of work, then suddenly you'll find yourself going, right, wake up first thing in the morning, cycle into work, then spend eight hours on your feet, and then cycle back out to the boat, and then wake up and do it all again the next morning. Now, like I say, that was absolutely fine for my time on board, Tilly, and I could still do it now for the, well, who knows how long. But, as I say, ultimately, it's not something that would be a realistically long-term way to live my life. And again, that starts to push you into going, just get a, get a marina spot and get a car, problem solved. And again, that's where you start to think, if I get a car, then that's going to so dramatically increase my cost of living that it'll mean that I have to go to work more often than I used to, because obviously living on a tiny little narrowboat and travelling about living a very basic life was giving me this incredible opportunity to basically live in an extremely affordable way as I did and limit the time that I had to spend at work so I could spend as much time doing all of this fun and game stuff out on the boat. So that's what I try and say and that's what I try and explain when I talk about getting older. I'm not saying suddenly, oh, I'm too weak and feeble to bike anywhere. I'm saying for the foreseeable future, it might be fine. But at some point, making these massive trips to go to work and then spend a day on your feet at work isn't a realistic thing to do. And it's not something that's going to make an enjoyable life than a lifestyle that I want to do as I get older and older and older. Just on the basic principle of human anatomy and I don't know what your term would be, but you get the general idea there. So again, I'm not saying suddenly I'm too old for it. I'm saying at some point I'll be too old to live or I just simply won't be fit enough, not even in aging necessarily, I won't be fit enough to live in the way that I have done in this extremely active manner. And that perhaps was a self-defeating element to boat life, that sooner or later my determination to try and be as active as possible and keep out of the marina would lead me to be like, oh, hang on, I'm really going to have to, for practical reasons, get a fixed spot somewhere and give up the basic principle of why I wanted to get into boat life in the first place. So there's been people as well taking the moment to go, oh, I know why it is you can't afford it and all that. And again, that's such a senseless argument that where I live now costs me probably more per year. I've probably spent more in a year living here than my entire four years that I lived on Narrowboat Tilly, apart from obviously the cost of purchasing the boat. And so that's something that, again, for me, in terms of work and in terms of finances, it would be easier for me to go out and get another boat right now and carry on living on a boat. So there is no sort of element of that. It's basically, like I say, this idea of commitment to the canal lifestyle and do I want to invest this much money and time and effort in doing up Tilly or getting another boat to then turn around in the not too distant future and go, hmm, this isn't quite what I really wanted. Similarly, in the theme of getting older, there's something that I've I'd noticed and I knew that it sort of affected me being on a boat, is that you sort of have, in a most literal sense, drift away from a lot of stuff. And as I was getting older and looking to have new elements in my life of like relationships and settling down and that sort of general idea, I sort of knew the affected stuff as I'd literally be travelling about on the boat and disappearing into the sunset down the canal and all that, that there were people that I literally, and quite literally as well as figuratively, drifted away from and as it got harder to meet up and stuff if I was taking the boat miles and miles out of the way, then relationships couldn't flourish in the way that they have since I've come back to boat, uh, to boat life, come back to dry land rather. And it's something that I knew, as I say, I knew that being on the boat had some sort of impact in the general sort of relationships and overall like social element of my life. But because I loved the peace and quiet to write my short books and all that sort of stuff, and I never was sat on a boat going, oh, I'm so lonely, or anything of that nature. Instead, 
I was like, oh, it's so nice to just escape from everything and be out here. But that did leave me because I took it to too much of an extreme. That And like I say, traveling around literally left me isolated at some points from people. Um, it did mean that there were certain elements that I missed out on. And it's something that I haven't realized just how much of an impact it had until moving back onto dry land and being right in the middle of where all my friends and families are, that I was sort of so far away from society and so far removed from a lot of normal everyday stuff that it did actually separate me from people in, like I say, figurative and literal senses. So don't worry, I've put that right, I can assure you, in recent times. But um, um, that's another element of... I knew that having the boat definitely had an impact on my life in a wider social sense. And although, again, it wasn't like I was ever going, oh, it's so lonely on the boat. If anything, I actually quite liked it. And there's times that I think, flipping heck, I'd love to just go out to the boat for a couple of days and not have to see anybody. And uh, that's the thought. those are thoughts that I have on a moderately regular occurrence, to be honest. And... Again, though, it's another thing about that getting older, looking at what do you actually want from life? How does that tie in with having a narrowboat? And again, it's just simple things like that, really. So like I say, there's no major reason of like, suddenly I thought boat life was rubbish because of this, this or this. It's just simple reasons, really, and simple ideas of what I wanted from boat life wasn't something that I thought I could sustain indefinitely into the future. There are a lot of elements out of your own control, like your own fitness and health. You can do your best to eat well and be active, but you haven't got 100% control over that. Your basic principles of living by the rules set by the Canal and River Trust. You never know what could change. Like I say, from one winter to the next winter, the rug was totally pulled from under my feet and it made my life a lot more difficult and awkward. But it was more of an annoyance than a disastrous ending of my boat life uh, sort of element that. But again, like I say, it was that simple thing of going, well, that just shows how much is out of my control and how much I could have spent money on a boat, spent all the money in the world on a boat, and then still found my life infinitely more difficult with that beautiful, new, comfortable boat I could have bought than if I'd have just stayed with tatty old narrowboat Tilly who needed a lot of work doing on it. So all of these different little elements, like I say, nothing major, no massive thing of, oh, boat's rubbish. And there's been people since my book came out who've got in touch saying like, oh, that explained a lot and I understand a lot more now. And there's also been people who sort of, I don't think have, have gone in with an open mind and have gone in looking to prove what they thought and what they wanted to prove about boat life. And being like, well, you just thought that it was too hard and all this. And again, that's not at all what it was. It was the fundamental basis of my boat life was I was living an active, much harder life than I could have, much harder life than I live now. But then equally, like I say, in some ways, a much easier financially easy life compared to what I'm doing now. So, yeah, there's all sorts of elements involved, all sorts of tiny reasons. And I just wanted to take a few more moments to just talk and sum up and respond to a few of the questions that I've had in recent months about it. So yeah, I still think that the canals are beautiful. I love boat life. I still think that my times, my four years on board Narrowboat Tilly were the best four years spent in just about the best way that I possibly could have. So on that note, let's wrap things up. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Hope that this is maybe given you things to think about if you're considering boat life or anything else like that. Please do check out my short boat life books for the Kindle, especially the latest one where I talk more in depth about my final months on board Narrowboat Tilly and why I gave up Narrowboat Tilly and the canal lifestyle. That's So that was boat life. You'll find links in the description to those. But really, until the next time, just have an absolutely fantastic day. If you subscribe or tune into my other boaty videos, then that's great. If not, just have a fantastic day. And until the ne next time, my friends, keep it boat worthy, keep it interesting, and of course, farewell.